Hello my fellow equestrians and horse lovers and welcome back to another video. Today I thought I would talk about some simple ways that you can keep yourself and your horse cool as the temperatures heat up this summer. So if you're interested in some tips that'll kind of help you beat the heat this summer then just keep on watching. So I'll start with some tips for the rider first. There are just some simple things that you can do to keep yourself cool. And so the first thing you can do is something I do quite frequently is carry around kind of like a small plastic spray bottle and just fill it up with water and then as you're riding around or moving around the barn if you just were to spray your body with water wherever the breeze from that action is going to actually evaporate the water that is on you and it's just a very natural cooling process it's basically just a cleaner way of sweating <laughs> so that is kind of my number one tip that i like to do and it's kind of just the easiest so we all know how important it is to protect ourselves from the sun. So obviously you want to make sure you're wearing some sort of sunscreen, especially on your face, kind of anywhere you're going to get that um, nasty rider's tan. So, but especially your face, back, your neck, shoulders, just anywhere that your skin is exposed that could be damaged from the sun. Along with protecting yourself from the sun, you can also ride early in the morning when it's typically cooler. Sometimes it could be a little more humid. Riding early in the morning will help you beat kind of the sun coming up at its highest point and probably beat the highest temperature of the day. When it comes to what you could be wearing, when you're not riding, you can get a sun hat to wear around, which is just going to be a wide brimmed hat that'll cover your face, neck, and shoulders. And it just makes for a lovely fashion statement as well. I know they also make kind of those things you can attach to a helmet that's the wider brim that protects your face more as well. I personally have never purchased one, but I do think they look beneficial and kind of cool. You also want to be sure that you're wearing some sort of breathable material, some sort of athletic material, have some sort of mesh. I know most people say cotton is breathable, but it really just depends on what kind of cotton you're wearing, what kind of blend because some cotton can get pretty toasty in my experience. And something as simple as just not wearing sleeves on your clothes is another way to just help you stay cooler. And the final tip that's just an overall good health tip is that you should always stay hydrated, or at least try to. You should be hydrating before you ride, during your ride, and after your ride. Staying hydrated is just a good idea in general, I would think, but you know. So those are kind of my simple tips to how to keep yourself cool. So now we'll get into some ways that you can help your horse stay cool. As we do know that they can get quite hot when they're working. And so they're, I would think you'd want to do anything you can to make sure they're comfortable and cool. So the first thing is to hose your horse off when you're done riding. Once you're done hosing them off, you want to make sure that you scrape off that water. Because if you leave the water on them without scraping it off, it can actually create kind of like an insulating layer and make them even warmer which is especially important that after you scrape the water off, you let them dry in a shaded area. Along with right after your ride, you want to make sure that you are allowing access to cool, fresh water less than 15 minutes after your ride. That is typically when horses are going to be the thirstiest and they'll be looking for water. Some horses can be stubborn, I know, and they don't want to drink, but you should always have the option for them to drink when you're done after a hot ride. It is very important to offer your horse fresh water after they are done riding because dehydration in horses can get pretty serious, but there are some quick ways that you can find out if your horse may be dehydrated and needs some fluids. So the three quick things you can look for is the skin pinch test to be your first one where you will go kind of between the base of the horse's neck, so where the neck meets the shoulder, and you're going to pinch their skin it should snack back almost immediately if your horse is not dehydrated. When a horse becomes dehydrated, it'll actually kind of stay up for a little bit before going back down. But again, it should just be like you're pinching yourself. Pinch goes right back down. But if it were to stay up, then that's a sign that your horse is dehydrated and you will have to do something. Another easy thing you can look at is capillary refill time. The capillaries you'll be looking at are the ones in their gums. So when you lift, lift up your horse's top lip, their gums should be moist and pink, so they should be you know, shiny and a light pink color. So all you do for this test is to just kind of press your finger on their gums and when you let go, it should fill up within one or two seconds. That's the blood rushing back right away. If it doesn't rush back right away, again, your horse may be dehydrated and you should probably get them some access to some water. So along the lines of the gums again, they should be moist and pink. If they become dry and white or purple, it's kind of a sign of severe to moderate dehydration and you should definitely get them some water so another thing that's an easy way to check if it is actually too hot to ride, you have to calculate the heat index for the day. So when it comes to the heat index, it kind of bases its addition on the fact that horses can cool themselves uh, up to a certain point, but as the temperature increases along with the humidity, 
their ability to self-cool themselves decreases to a point where eventually they can't cool themselves naturally. So that's why it's important to look at this scale. So all you have to do to find the heat index is to add the temperature, which would be in Fahrenheit, with the percentage humidity for the So it's kind of understood, believe there's four different levels when it comes to the heat index. So if you add the two together, and it's less than 120, the horse can effectively cool itself. You don't really have to do much to cool them after the ride. They should be able to effectively cool themselves. Some is 140 or more. The horse is relying on sweat to cool themselves. So again, they can kind of uh, self-regulate their temperature but they are going to start sweating so when those two added together equal 150 or more the horse's cooling system is compromised and they are going to need help cooling down so they can no longer regulate their temperature themselves they are going to need some assistance from you finally if it is 160 or more the horse has no way of cooling themselves down and they're going to need a lot of help when they're done riding and they'll need aggressive cooling so again, that's something that I use a lot in the summer, mostly to find out if I want to ride or not, because a lot of times in my area it can get up to 180 when added together, which is pretty warm, especially when you don't have like a cooler indoor to ride in. Our indoor can get a little warm in the summer. Those days, okay, we'll just do groundwork or we'll do something where it's more like just grooming, maybe just give them a bath if they haven't had one in a while, just something to keep them comfortable and not having them work on such a hot day when they can't cool themselves. Finally, if you are always doing intensive work that is causing your horse to sweat kind of a lot frequently, you should look into feeding an electrolyte supplement or just some extra salt in general. So when your horse sweats, they are losing electrolytes and by feeding them back in the diet, you're replenishing what they lose during exercise. All horse diets have kind of a general baseline for electrolytes that are needed, but again, if they are working a lot and sweating more, that requirement is going to increase. And I was thinking about doing a video for that in the future because I do enjoy talking about nutrition. It's kind of something I really enjoyed in school. So if you're interested in a video like that, just let me know. I believe Smart Pack may have a video with the Ask the Vet where they talk about feeding electrolytes and why they're important. So I'll link that below as well. And that is pretty much all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys learned something and have some of these tips will help you stay a little cooler this summer. And so, I don't remember how I end my videos. It's been so long. <laughs> Hang on one second. Now past brand is down in the comments below. Again, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you have any other cooling tips that I didn't mention that you think are beneficial, please let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking for ways to stay cooler. I hate being warm. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.